Hey folks, today we have a complete in-depth review of the new Garmin Edge Explorer 2. This is Garmin's somewhat budget as well as touring focused Edge unit, and it basically has a larger display than something like the Edge 530 or Edge 830, you can see that right there, but not quite as big as the Garmin Edge 1030 Plus or 1040 that you see right there. Of course, the main difference is the price is considerably cheaper than the Edge 1030 or 1040, sitting at to $299 for the Edge Explorer 2 or $399 for the Edge Explorer 2 Power Bundle. Now, before we dive into all of the newness on the Edge Explorer 2, as well as some of the basics, a hands-on user interface walkthrough, all that goodness, it's important to note there are basically two different models of the Edge Explorer 2. There's the base unit that you see right here for $299, but there's also a so-called power bundle for $399. And in that power bundle, you get the power mount. The power mount is basically just a mount that you can attach to a battery pack or to an e-bike. This thing by itself costs $129. So the fact that the power bundle only costs $100 more is a bit of a savings. But far more important than that is is that the base unit itself does not include the battery connectors on it. Uh, versus if you look at something like the Edge 830, 530, or the Edge 1040, they have these battery connectors on it. Only the Edge Explorer 2, though, that's sold in the power bundle also has the battery connectors on the bottom of it. So if you ever wanted to use the extra battery pack, buy the bundle up front, otherwise you can't simply use that battery pack with it. Now before we get into all the newness on the Edge Explore 2, let's just briefly set the stage for what's included in the Edge Explore kind of series of bike computers, and particularly the Edge Explore 2.0 or 2. First off, it's a full mapping and navigation GPS, meaning that you can load courses on it, you can navigate to points of interest, like restaurants and cafes, even bike shops uh, if you wanted to. Global map downloads are free. That is a big change that we'll talk about in just a second, but you can download any map for anywhere in the world free as long as you got a USB cable. You can plug this into a computer and get those maps downloaded. The unit has 16 gigs of storage on it. It's also got full sensor support, so it's got the ability to connect to pretty much all cycling sensors out there, like Varia radar, as well as e-bikes, and now even power meters as well. And we'll dive into that in just a second too. After you ride, it'll upload to all the sites you'd expect, like Strava and Komoot and Ride with GPS and Training Peaks. I mean, pretty much every site that Garmin connects to, which is basically every site out there, it'll upload to those sites showing your ride, where you went, and you can look at all the details there. On the back, as you saw earlier, it has a standard Garmin quarter turn mount, which is useful because it's compatible with tons of third-party mounts out there. Pretty much every bike company out there that has built-in mounts uh, for bike computers has a Garmin quarter turn mount option on it. So this is just a standard mount that you'd see there. It's also got Garmin's full Connect IQ app support, so you can load apps onto it, load data fields onto it, customizations, all the stuff that you would expect from their higher units. And lastly, that does include as well smartphone notifications. Like you can see this notification last night mid-ride for my wife that shows up on here. You can change and tweak the settings on this if you don't want to see these notifications so mid-ride. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are a ton of new features on the Edge Explore 2. And I'm going to focus on the big ticket items, but there are like dozens of small little items. And I've tried to capture all of those in my written in review that lots of little tweaks that Garmin's integrated for basically changes over the last four years to their edge units. Uh, the first big change here is that it's got a completely revamped user interface. So this user interface mirrors what you see on the Edge uh, 1040 series that just came out last month. Uh, and then with that, also the ability to configure data fields from your smartphone as well. So within the Garmin Connect app, you can go into that, you can configure the data fields as you see fit uh, for all your activity profiles, all the data fields within that, and even just general settings on the Edge Explorer as well. And hey, just a quick note, if you're finding this video interesting and useful, now's a great time to whack that like button. It really does help out this video and the channel quite a bit. The next big change is the addition of a barometric altimeter. In the past, it actually did not have that. And then with that barometric altimeter, it means you get more accurate data, but also you get Garmin's Climb Pro. And it's the first time we've seen that on kind of one of their budget units or one of their uh, Edge Explore variant units. And that feature shows you the distance and elevation and gradient to the top of the climb. It is arguably my favorite Garmin feature. Out of every single feature they have on every single watch and device, it is super useful if you're climbing. Next, on the bottom, you'll see they've added a USB-C port. Finally, Garmin has been transitioning to USB-C uh, over the past couple months or over the past year, I guess over 2022, finally on the Edge Explore 2 as well. But for many of you, the big ticket item here will be the addition of more sensor types. Uh, so the Edge Explore 2 added power meter sensor types so you can pair it up to power meters. It's also added smart trainers so you can pair it to smart trainers and control those smart trainers. And it's added Garmin inReach satellite communicator. So if you've got an inReach satellite communicator, you can pair it with the Edge. That basically gives you coverage uh, when you're outside of cell phone range. And then for the e-bike side of the house, they've got expanded connectivity there, but 
but also a new data field page or a new data page that shows you e-bike integration with Shimano Steps. And you can see the picture of that right here. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind though is you do have to have not only a compatible e-bike, but the transmission portion of that on the e-bike as well. I just went to the bike shop to try to uh, test this out. And unfortunately they didn't have all of those right components, despite having tons and tons of really high-end e-bikes, none of those high-end e-bikes had all the right components to make this work. So that is one caveat to be aware of that just because you have an e-bike doesn't mean it'll work with this particular setup. The other minor caveat to be aware of on the power meter side is if you have Garmin Rally or Vector3 uh, pedals, it will record the cycling dynamics data. So that's things like uh, the pedal offset and all that kind of fun stuff, seated standing time, etc. But you will not see the cycling dynamics data on the unit itself. Uh, you will go ahead and see all of your regular power data. So you can see your total power and cadence and whatnot. You can see that as I'm out here riding right now, uh, but you won't see the advanced pedaling metrics on this display. You would have to have something like the Edge 530 or 830 or 1040 or one of the other units that has it on there. Frankly, it doesn't make much sense to me. The, the price for the 530 is the exact same as this. Like, just bake that stuff in. There's, there's no reason to, to force you to go to the site to display that stuff. Especially since you're buying a $1,000 power meter from Garmin anyways. Like, come on, don't, don't nickel and dime us here. Meanwhile, on the smart trainer side, you can ride courses that you've downloaded to the unit or past activities, but you cannot do structured workouts. So you can't download a workout from Garmin Connect and do it on the unit itself. Uh, that's, again, saved for equally priced units that are three years older than this. Again, just another example of kind of like weird differentiation that Garmin does that doesn't really make a lot of sense when you kind of view all their units through sort of a singular lens. Next up, they've increased the battery life from 12 hours of GPS time to 16 hours of GPS time and up to 24 hours in the battery saver mode. The battery saver mode simply reduces the refresh rate on the display. So if you need to eke out that last little bit of battery, you can do that. Keep in mind though, all those battery claims are actually with navigation and sensors enabled. Uh, so in reality, if you were to toggle the battery saver mode on the unit itself, it'll show you some 34 hours of battery time with a full battery. And so the same will also apply when it comes to regular GPS usage and that you're probably gonna get more battery life if you're not navigating uh, than the stock claims that they have there. And then finally, Garmin has added VO2 max and recovery time, intensity minutes, and fitness age to the Edge uh, Explore 2. In fact, this is a great time to walk through the user interface of the Edge Explore 2 and kind of show it to you uh, first here and then out on the road. So this is the new Edge Explorer 2 interface, the same that we've seen on the Edge 1040, as I mentioned earlier on. These are called glances right here. You can see my last ride from last night right there. The navigation option, we'll dive into that in just a second. Courses that I've loaded, the ability to search for points of interest there, my history, uh, the current weather here, the VO2 max I just mentioned, recovery time, and sunset. But I can tweak all these right here. These are the different glances that you can choose. I can add more, so I can add intensity minutes and fitness age and notifications. We'll just add those. We can rearrange the ordering and you can see them listed right here. Uh, now, if we go back up to VO2 max, you'll see here's the VO2 max and the data point right there. Keep in mind, not every single ride will give you a new VO2 max number. Uh, last night did for me, but not every single ride would do that. And this is staying relatively static for me right now. If we go back, you'll see my recovery time at 21 hours. This is the combination of last night's ride as well as my runs I did on my watch. Uh, all that stuff gets combined together. Uh, so it's not just the cycling only. If you do have a Garmin watch, it'll sync all that data together using Physio True Up. Up at the very top, we have a swipe down menu. This is basically your control panel. You can get your activity profile, the GPS mode, uh, sensors. You can disable or re-enable your phone. And you can tap these right here to get different controls. So if I can set a bike alarm, for example, if I'm in a cafe, you can go ahead and just set this. And if someone touches your bike, it'll make a really loud, horrendous sound and also notifies your phone that someone's touching your bike. It's not going to keep someone from stealing your bike, but if you're within like just, you know, a, a few meters or so, it alerts you that someone might be dorking with your bike. Tapping again here, you can see notifications. Uh, nothing missed right now. I've got the weather there. Uh, and then I have the trainer if I were to pair it up a trainer. If you do have something like the Garmin Varia RCT 715, it'll go ahead and display the controls for the camera there as well. Uh, but uh, it's not something I've paired up with this particular unit. It is worthwhile noting that this unit does not have multi-band GPS like you'd see on the Edge 1040 or even on the new 400 255. Uh, it's just the regular GPS option. You can see there's three options here. Uh, Multi-GNS, which is not multi-band. It's just simply uh, within a couple different GNS SS options like GLONASS and Galileo, etc., um, which is the option you normally choose, or best battery life or off. Uh, so I'll just choose that right there. And then within the sensors option here, I can pair sensors. It will automatically pull in your existing sensors if you have an existing Garmin Edge device. You can see I've got a couple different sensors here, a couple power meters, uh, trainers, and so on. I can go in the add sensor menu. You can see heart rate, speed, cadence, verb, that's their action camera, lights, cycling radar, power, in reach, edge remote, Shimano steps, e bike, Tempe, and smart trainer. 
And then once I were to choose one of these, uh, it should go ahead and power up, prepare up to any of the items that I have listed here. Now, going back to the main menu right here, you'll see at the top, I've got road. And if I tap it again, indoor and off-road. These are my activity profiles. These profiles control a bunch of data pages and configurations within those. So if I go back to the road one right there, I go down the bottom, choose activity profiles. You can see again, those three profiles and I can customize those profiles. The data screens in there, I can go here, I can see I've got one screen that's kind of a customizable screen right there with six different uh, fields on it. You can see some of the fields I've customized. And if I go back here, I've got some stock fields like lap summary, the map, elevation, uh, group track, if I've got friends on uh, live tracking near me, climb pro, and I have two custom screens there, screen two and screen three. I can add here another data screen. I can add e-bike metrics, steps metrics, et cetera, all to this. And this is all customizable for each one of those three activity profiles. However, you can't have more activity profiles than three, and you can't really customize them beyond that. I can change the name of it. I can change the color of it, uh, but the ride type is road. Versus on something like the uh, Edge A30, 530, and 1030, and 1040, I can add more activity profiles, and I have more customizations within those. Nonetheless, you can see in here, I've got Climb Pro customization, alerts, uh, so I can go change the lap alerts, distance, calorie, heart rate, power, min max turn around eat drink connect iq alerts uh, lots of options to customize all this if i want to as well as choosing which satellite options i want so for example mountain biking you may want to choose multi gnss to get more accurate data versus if you're riding out like on farmlands you can probably get away with just regular gps because there's not trees and mountains and stuff like that in the way so going on back to the main screen here you can see this is all is a touch screen by the way uh, i have had no problems with touch on this including even with wet hands last night at the end of the ride it, it responded just fine uh, now, going on down here, we've got navigation. This is where you can browse the map, you can load courses, you can search for things, uh, save locations, or recent finds. Recent finds is useful if you're searching for things repeatedly and want to go back to something you might have searched for just a couple minutes ago. Uh, so for example, I can search in here. You can see bike shops, convenience, parks. These are all point of interest categories. And I can tap into the bike shop one. I can see compressed air, repair stations. Let me just search for compressed air nearby. And here's a list of all those shops. I can tap one of these and it'll go ahead and give me the route to that location. So you can see right now, uh, it's kind of hard to see on this particular map until I zoom in a bunch. We'll zoom in, we'll get a bit more detail on that. There we go. Uh, and I can choose ride and then go off and create the route to that particular location. Now, one of the things that Garmin has done with the Edge Explorer 2 as well as the 1040 is they've hidden the calculating page kind of behind the scenes. Meaning in the past, you had to wait for the calculating. The secret is that you never actually had to wait. You just think you did. Uh, now it just simply happens behind the scenes. You can start immediately riding. You don't need to wait for any of that stuff. And the same is true for loading up a course. Uh, so for example, under my courses right there, here's the course I did last night. I can tap this course and it'll show me some information about that particular course. That's the outline of it. And this is the elevation. Uh, not a lot of elevation here. Just a little bit up, a little bit down. And if I tap a summary, you can see uh, this is the average predicted speed based on what Strava had put in there, as well as the ascent and descent. Uh, if I tap on ride, it'll go ahead and load that up. And it'll ask me if I want to navigate to the start of the course. Uh, that means, say I'm like a couple kilometers away from the start. This will get me to that starting point and then start the actual course itself. I'm going to choose no though, which is fine. And then these are my data pages. So this is a customized one there. This is a lap summary page. This is the map page. I can zoom out like this. I can tap a little hand. I can move around. Uh, it's, it's not super fast. It's not like your phone, but it's generally good enough uh, for most cycling purposes. I don't really have a reason to go any faster than this. Uh, I can swipe again. I can get to the elevation page here. Uh, swipe again. This is one of the power pages I configured with my three second power up top, my heart rate, my speed, my distance. Uh, and this is another page I've customized. And you can see some of these page examples uh, outside while I'm riding along. All this data is updated in real time uh, and recorded to the file as soon as you press start. In terms of routing when you're riding along, it'll go ahead and pop up a notification when a turn is coming up. It's about 150 or so meters out. It'll say, hey, here's a turn. And it'll go ahead and just keep on counting down until you get to that particular turn. It'll show you whether you're going to turn right or left and the street name if it's applicable or a cycle path and so on. When it comes to rerouting, if you were to go off course, it'll pop up notifications saying, hey, you're off course. Do you want to choose an alternate course? And in some cases, it'll give you alternate options if that's a viable situation. In other cases, it chooses the only option you have and just starts to reroute you automatically. I purposely went off my course last night. I didn't have any problems. It rerouted me automatically in the cases where it just would have catch up a little bit later on down the road. Speaking of last night, let's just do a quick look at the GPS track from that compared to the Edge 1040 as well as the Garmin 400 255 and 955. And you can see from this, it's virtually identical. But these are pretty easy roads. Uh, there are a couple tunnels, though, that you can see right here. A couple areas where I went to underneath uh, big highway overpasses or even under, I think, the runway at one point. Uh, and no problems in any of that. Uh, but for the most 
pro we tend to see that the edge units are pretty good across the board uh, when it comes to accuracy uh, because they have more power to deal with and a larger area for the antenna. Now, before we wrap things up, I want to quickly talk about the edge power mount because it's kind of interesting, but also kind of a little bit weird. Uh, so this is the edge power mount here. Again, this is 129 bucks. And the purpose of this thing is to basically provide a way to power your edge unit, uh, any of these edge units, as long as they've got the little connectors on the back. Uh, so if you buy the Garmin Explorer, so if you buy the Edge Explore 2 bundle, it has little connectors on the back of the unit. But as I mentioned earlier, if you buy the base unit, there's no uh, connectors on the back. Nonetheless, these connectors connect up to this here, and then it basically locks in place. So if I go to straight, there we go. Uh, and I can lock this down with a locking mechanism, and now that's locked there. And then you've got this little cable sticking out. Now what's notable though, is that this $50 cable is not included. This is a USB-A cable to plug it into a power bank. Instead, what's included in the box is what's called a CAN bus cable for Cannondale's uh, power system, meaning one of Cannondale's bikes, not just any bike. If you want a different power system, you can see the cables are offered right there. There's the Bosch one and the Shimano one. Uh, each of those cables is also 50 bucks. So this cable here for USB power bank is 50 bucks. The Bosch cable is 50 bucks and the Shimano cable is 50 bucks. And the idea behind those is theoretically cool though in that you can take this tiny little thing and plug it into the junction box on an e-bike. So for example, I actually have the Cannondale Synapse which has uh, the smart sense system and it has the CAN bus system in it. And I can plug this straight in there and it gets power and it's great, except one catch. That particular bike has aero handlebars, which this does not fit around. And I get that the main goal of this though is for e-bikes to have round handlebars, but still it's a bit of a kind of a catch 22 there. The other catch though, is that at the end of the day, you're spending a lot of money for power. So you're spending 129 bucks on this piece here. Then you're spending 50 bucks on this piece here. So now you're up to 180 bucks so far in just cables without actually the battery, then you've got to add a battery bank to that, or you have a you know high-end bike that has that there. That just seems like a lot to me. Garmin sold in the past this uh, battery pack that functionally works essentially the same way. Uh, so basically this goes ahead and it pops underneath like this, uh, and it actually has battery power on it. You can even use the USB port if you want to power something else. Uh, and this is cheaper than this whole thing. It's basically like half the cost when all things are considered. To me, this is cool, but not at this price point. The price point is just bomb crazy and I think they have much wider adoption of this if they would include you know the USB cable in the box like every other manufacturer every other device out there um, or if the price would just simply lower this this cable should not cost $50 I'm, I'm sorry none of these should uh, so that's my only real complaint there despite being a cool product and a cool design of a product but I'll do a separate video on the edge power mount a little bit later on the down the road so what are my overall thoughts on the edge Explorer uh, 2 here I like it, but I think there's a couple things to keep in mind. Uh, first off, you really are buying primarily just this display. That's sort of what you're getting at. Uh, if you want more features, you would get something like the Edge 530 at the same price point or the Edge 830 a little bit more. After all, it has the power pins in the bottom. It has structured workout support. It has tons more physiological features, uh, but it does have that slightly smaller display. As you can see right here, uh, displays, if I put them right in the bottom, uh, this is definitely a bigger display. And at the high end, of course, you have the Edge 1030 Plus or Edge 1040, as you see right here, with a bigger display and all those same more advanced features, and even more advanced features in the 530 and 830. Still, I think at 299, it's a reasonable price for what it is. Uh, and it's something that if you don't care about those advanced features, you just want a bigger display, it's a solid option. With that, hopefully you found this interesting and useful. If so, go ahead and like that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Eurobike started today and there's plenty of goodness on the way. With that, have a good one.